So very, very much since the general election, conservatives have been coping hard about the scale of their defeat, and more importantly, really trying to draw the attention that Labour only won about 34% of the vote. And that that is a completely loveless landslide, that it is, you know, shows that they are only going to be a one-term government, etc., etc. Don't believe that I it's a load of cope. But what this has led them into making the argument for, unbeknownst to them, is that they are making the argument to change our electoral system. Now, I've said before, I want to change our electoral system too. But one of the things we have to really do is spread this, not just in the Labour Party, in the Lib Dems, in the Greens, etc., etc. It also has to be there in the Conservative Party. And in fact, the person uh, who we're going to be talking about, uh, talking about today in their article, we've actually covered them before talking about how conservatives need to accept the reality that PR is going to happen. In fact, it's quite an, quite a last time we, we, we covered this person. It must have been a year, if not more, uh, since we last covered her. But again, it does go to show you, I keep on saying that, but <laughs> it does go to show you, you need to get this on board in the Conservative Party, that you need them pushing for PR. And if Conservatives are going to, you know, keep on making this argument, then we need to go, oh, so are you making an argument to change our electoral system? You know, that's what needs to really be happening next. I think this is an interesting article because it asks the question, can Conservatives actually talk seriously about election reform? Because so far, when you've been seeing these arguments, as we've been seeing since the election, they have really not been serious, and if anything, more a bunch of cope from the Conservatives indeed. But before we do get more into this, please do remember to click on the like, share, do leave a comment down below what you think about this as well, because it's always interesting to hear and see what you guys think as well. And of course, there is the Patreon page down below. There's the Buy Me Coffee link if you want to buy me coffee, the YouTube thank you button. And of course, as always, there is the Pony Club down below. So thank you very much to all the people who do help and support the channel. And if you'd like to do that, again, go check out the links below. And of course, as always, let's crack on into today's show. So off we go over to Conservative Home. So she starts off with a little quote from Winston Churchill, saying the present system for Westminster elections can clearly uh, is clearly broken down. The results produced are not fair to any party, nor to any selection of the community. In many uh, cases, they do not even secure a majority of representation, nor do they actually secure an intelligent representation of the minorities. All they secure is a fluke representation, freak representation, and capricious representation. So that's a quote. So these are, of course, the words of Winston Churchill. And I so often do reflect on, especially now, after such a historically bad loss for the Conservatives in the general election. For as long as I have talked about reforming our electoral system, I have been told that it would be akin to electoral suicide. I have been told over and over that first past the post is the best model under which we can win. And any change would see us eternally locked out of government. And to an extent, that would be true. Like, the current Conservatives would be locked out if they remained as they are. Then what would happen is that the Conservative Party would have to adapt to the new reality. They would actually have to start going after the centrist voters. That would moderate the Conservative Party a whole lot. A whole, whole lot on that. Because as I've said, you look at the voting rates, the biggest faction growing in the UK is centrist. 35% of people, when they were polled, said they were centrist, compared to 25% on the right, 25% on the left. The only number that has grown significantly, if you look back at these different ones that you can see over time, is the centrists, where it's gone from 30 to 35 and like I say, if that happened, they would have to moderate themselves. They would have to change themselves, all of that. So, but anyway, back to this. So, 
Uh, all evidence and reason, of course, does not support that argument. And whether one sees the virtues of more proportional representation or not, it is seemingly inevitable that electoral reform will happen. This is what she was talking about last time, if you remember that article. It's like, electoral reform is going to happen. It's, it's inevitable. We can't, we can't resist it. So why not actually prepare for it and even help shape it? Couldn't agree more. <laughs> you know, she is right on the money on this. So she continues, with public support for a change to the voting system now at 45% and ever rising, therefore it would not be uh, would not be best to get on uh, the ship and take charge of steering it and stand on the deck and be surprised when it leaves without you. The damage that first past the post does to all parties, including the Conservatives, should have been realised back in 1947 when Ted Heath won the popular vote but it was Harold Wilson who then snatched the election and formed a minority government. This July, we were issued another stark reminder of the flaws of our voting system. According to Electoral Reform Society, conservative M uh, conservatives saw an MP elected for every 56,000 votes, whereas Labour saw an election of MPs for every 23,000 votes. That's less than half the conservative figure. Even the Liberal Democrats, who historically suffer under the first past their post, require fewer votes per MP, 48,000, than the Conservatives. The result of our recent election under FTP are now more erroneous when you realise that despite receiving the highest number of votes in three regions of England, East, South and South West, the Conservatives did not actually achieve a higher number of MPs in any region. And the important case study here is London, where Conservatives have now ended up with just nine MPs out of 75. The London Assembly elected just two months earlier, where it was evident there were other factors in play. Conservatives returned a much stronger eight Assembly members out of 25. Electoral reform does not mean we need to adopt the same voting system as we have for uh, European parliamentary elections, or even local, even local constituency, local constituency links are then lost. Certainly, neither does this mean adopting a system of the Welsh Labour that have just introduced in the Welsh Senate, where political parties now have an obscene amount of power over who gets a seat. With the Conservative experience at the table, democratic reform does, uh, and that respects our traditions and culture, and maintains cons the constituency link that is now fairer to all parties and voters is possible. There is another way to achieve a fairer, more democratic voting system for everyone, and it is time to acknowledge that it wouldn't come at the cost of conservative representation. So I would say that is a good message. Now, of course, it's from, you know, it, it's PR from the conservative point of view. But as I said, you need, you need this type of argument in the Conservative Party, being made to Conservatives. You know, when we get to whatever, maybe it's a referendum on, on PR, like the pro-PR side will have to make the argument to more than just Greens, Lib Dems, Labour, etc. It will have to make the argument to everyone and say, hey, PR is good for everyone. You know, not just one party. So, like it or not, the argument that she made there, being made to conservatives from a conservative point of view, I think is incredibly valuable because that helps us get to PR. That helps us get there because you need this type of movement in the Conservative Party saying, actually, PR, not a bad idea, probably should go to it. And it's very, very interesting that she is bringing up saying, hey, look, this is coming. We cannot avoid it. We cannot escape it. Might as well be on the deck of the ship, not on the dock as that that ship you know sails off into the into the distance saying hey hey wait for us so 
I think that is an incredibly useful argument. I really, really do. Like I say, it's from a conservative point of view. I've said before, this type of, of conservative viewpoint into PR, very, very useful, very, very good for getting there and achieving there. I think it will be definitely, definitely worth it in the long run. And even if you, you know, not going to vote for conservatives, we need, if we are to achieve PR, we do need a strong faction in the conservatives of when the time comes to change our voting system to vote for us. Because the last thing you want to do is, as we've seen under the previous conservative administrations, is when we've had, you know, regional mayors, the London Assembly, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We've had a lot of things where we have had um, proportional representation being voted. But what have you had? The second the Conservatives came in, they changed it because they weren't winning under that system. This has led to what she pointed out there in the article that, oh, if we change the voting system, we'll be locked out of power forever. And as she pointed out, not necessarily true. And as I've even said, you know, the Conservatives would change. They they would have to change to survive under this new electoral system. Every, every party would adapt in some way, shape or form to the realities of the new electoral system. Because at that point, as I've always said, how do you win our elections? It's not by vote share, etc. or anything like that. It's by how many seats you win. And depending on how many seats you win, depends how much power you get in the parliament. And again, I don't like it. I want to see it changed. But until we do get that change, that's the system you've got to play in. And once we do get that change, then we can, you know, get the new board out, we can get the new rules out, and we can start playing in the PR game. But until then, we've got to play under these rules. Like it or not, we've got to change, we've got to, you know, advocate for change and play within these rules for now until we get the change that we want. So I think that is a very useful um, conversation. And if you've got conservative friends, bear in mind, if you've got conservative friends, um, Talk to them. Like, read this, read the article. Go talk to your conservative friends about it. Build that movement in the conservative party because it will be very useful when the time comes for that change for PR. And she does make a very good argument for why conservatives should actually care about PR. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. And, of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.